So, uh, Professor Siva Mohan, uh, the question I have for you to start us off is how how can we see the move of inviting cis SIS to address ragging, and uh, how can we view it? And if we think that it is not okay, what uh, how can we stop it? Okay, thank you, Shamla, Professor Kumar. Um, well, the simple answer to the introduction of uh, in intelligence to combat ragging is a very clear and loud no. There can be no uh, compromise on that. Um, why? Well, I mean, it, it's clearly a violation of democratic practice in the universities. And it's the universities is a civilian structure, is a place of education. And any kind of covert, overt or covert uh, introduction of uh, intelligence, which is an arm of the military apparatus, is, a, is repression. It's, it, it is repression uh, as well as part of will lead to further repression the introduction of cis is part of the militarization of civilian structures that is ongoing we have military training in leadership uh, uh, education in universities and schools we had had then we protested at the universities and there's moved to reintroduce that we have mil military, somebody saying that the military is uh, talking about how to combat COVID instead of medical professionals. I mean, we have seen this move toward militarization in uh, uh, recent times, starting with the war and in, in, in different ways, but uh, now it's seeping much more and more into the civilian structures. So, so it's a very clear no. The other thing is handing over the problem of ragging to assist points to a lack in the university system. And that lack that is becoming more and more apparent. It's also a crisis for the university system. The university is being infantilized and being rendered helpless. It has created this for itself by not taking any kind of responsibility for ragging. But it also is part of another culture, overall culture, where the university has become a, a very subordinate and subservient. Uh, it's playing a subordinate and subservient role to the other authoritarian structures in, uh, in governance. So very quickly then we're ragging. What do we do then? Let me very quickly say something. That ragging is a manifestation of a deep seated problem that necessitates two kinds of responses. There could be more, but I'm just outlining two. Disciplinary. I mean, I mean, we cannot get around the idea of discipline. You know, people violate, people do harm, people terrorize other students. You know, there would be disciplinary rules, laws, procedures. But such, but I will follow this up very quickly with such invocations of law have to take place within a democratic setup for any kind of lasting solution. We have to then locate the problem in the right place. Ragging, though egregious, extreme and clearly wrong, is an illegal thing. It's possible only within a structure of undemocratic and uh, undemocratic hierarchy. And this hierarchy is not just about senior students and junior students, but students and staff, and or students and administration, but staff and ad higher administration as well. And then the administration, staff, and the UGC. In one sense, I would say that these, the UGC and the university hierarchy, that's the main culprit. Why have we not done anything about this before? And the university hierarchy authorities are washing their hands off the problem by saying, okay, come in here and do something about it. Ragging is clearly wrong. Ragging is set within the hierarchical framework that the university has inherited and re in from larger society and reinforced within its workings. 
the universities also reinforce and reinstitute wider social divisions such as gender, ethnicity, region, discipline, and of course, class. Ragging is an act that exploits this and reassembles this among the students. And ragging is a means by which student university administration and student staff relations are mediated. We need to locate the problem in that right in that place. I very quickly I would mention five groups that need to get their act together and that need to form relationships either in opposition or in collaboration. One is the academic staff. I think the academic staff are vital. And they need to be organized in opposition and in support of defense. Through active participation and, and ideological participation, the academic staff needs to be involved. Cancel, I'm just kind of saying some things in, in terms of what, what can be done. Cancel the week's classes and do only sit-ins and teach-ins. This does not eradicate ragging and it might create tensions within the university, but it could strengthen women, anti-raggers, socially minded staff. It would expand the space for dissent. Same counseling sessions hold, should be held du during the first semester. Make available counseling for students in safe places and in halls or for safety sake outside the university or some safe place. I'm just throwing these things out. Administration has washed its hands of this problem for their complicity in this. They have no plan whatsoever in combating this. And they're happily handing over the problem to an external agency. So pressure should be placed on administrations to do something that comes, and the pressure should come from below. You know, there's little support in the administration for dissenting stud uh, students who contest elections. Administration does not nurture an anti-ragging culture at all in the university. If any, I mean, anti-raggers have to combat both the student union and the student bodies that rag, as well as the administration, which turn, you know, which treats the anti-ragging community in a in a quote unquote, maybe that's not the right word, but pardon me, in a stepmotherly fashion. So, Mati, can are you done? Or? So, Okay, yeah, how many minutes more? How many minutes? You're done. More? Your time is okay, up. So, okay, so I'll, I'll wind up. Student unions, individual students, and the public. I mean, those are the others. Student unions are vital, and I'll stop here. Student unions have to be pressured, pressurized. I will stop here.